So today's uh, 12 Feb, doing this mode of uh, video production. I, I won't call it, I will call it analyzing the original. So uh, this particular video was recorded earlier before I did this video. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to uh, go through the whole video myself, listening to what I'm going to say. And uh, yeah, let's wear on the earphones and during any segments of the video that I find that I need to rehash something, I'll just say it out. Yep, let's start. So today is uh, third Feb. Uh, in the evening, 9.55, uh, doing a, I think, fourth take of this particular video. Um, this video stem from a conversation that happened over lunch uh, was discussing this idea about what is the proper metric to assess company uh, so let me write it here metric so my writing has started to assess assess company so in this video right I'm not going to talk about SaaS companies because that is definitely not mm. within my territory. But what I'm going Stick to do to your is of competence. I'm going to use a read instead because that is in my lane, right? From the lunch uh, discussion, uh, first thing we know, all matrix makes sense. Yes, all matrix makes sense. If we understand the input, so understanding input is more of understanding the business that you are, that you intend to invest in, or what we want to measure. Previously, I recorded a video on read, uh, talking about uh, when would I want to uh, use a NAV to evaluate my read or a dividend yield to evaluate the intrinsic value mm. of my read these two matrix these two. so let me just rehash uh, NAV uh, I don't really use it yep listen I carefully I use this because my read manager needs to sell away the buildings uh, this would my read manager be selling away the in golden goose? In and out. Right? Such that there is no more uh, passive income coming. So naturally, I would have taken the dividend yield approach. I wanted to let the audience know, if you happen to be uh, viewing this video, I needed to put, put in more context. Right? Because I use reads to build my parents uh, retirement portfolio so in the retirement context my parents will require so the context is very right? important because that's going to determine how you're going to use it so naturally that would have got me to determine hey should my all my funds be going into looking at companies that can uh, provide and generate a consistent cash flow it need not necessarily be a read it can be any other business right that is able or has grown has strong fundamentals to support the passive income uh, which is by the company or the business giving out dividends so even before we start using any valuation method some things I need you to know important which uh, I'm not sure if uh, you have done it first determine your portfolio allocation sounds basic but extremely important uh, it's kind of straightforward of this because there's only two options A you either go for a growth 
and most of the time growth the returns from growth companies come from capital mm. appreciation okay two basic ways for investor to get back their returns there's the other one which is B passive income and you're getting it as a means of dividends coming back most of the time or perhaps classmates that I've always encountered who ask me such a question they tend to want A and B together but uh, my own experience I won't do that the key of being uh, doing this exercise is such that I force myself to make a conscious decision so it could probably be as simple as important coming up important coming up at the start of the 100k I have I make a conscious decision okay let's say 50k goes to growth to A then 50k portfolio goes to B location. so with this clear conscious decision before I even look at any metric I would have naturally known that if I was tending if I'm, my whole direction was going more towards passive income right I would naturally know that what is the valuation method that I want to use so let me just do the linkage uh, I hope you can see blue by having by understanding what I'm doing down here it would have naturally allowed me to either take this path on the left or the path on the right and by knowing what I want to do here right I would have naturally known that I would have used the dividend yield method if I use the dividend yield method naturally I would have known what are the type of companies to look at so with this dividend you or and coupled with the company that I known then I would have known that this particular matrix have made some sense okay this part so this is what I wanted uh, to share in this video of why uh, I still use still use a uh, dividend yield uh, to determine the intrinsic value of REITs uh, I'm not sure if I'm if you're able to take a screenshot but if you could uh, yeah maybe you can take a screenshot based on based mm -hmm. on this one okay uh, take a screenshot if you need to put it as a screensaver uh, please do it and uh, if you found that this video can uh, help anyone uh, please share this video and uh, I look forward to recording the next uh, video for you which will document down the next thought process that's running through my mind uh, every day uh, thanks for watching appreciate your time so that's the end of that uh, original video that I wanted to uh, share with you guys uh, hope that framework has at least given you an insight of how uh, you can structure of course this is not the one and ultimate final way you through the years of investing you may discover that uh, perhaps at different certain uh, at different times right in our own individual investment journey things may change you know maybe you get a windfall from Toto or something some it may change the way that you structure your portfolio so uh, be like water uh, be able to adapt uh, to the ever-changing influences from the external environment um, yes uh, do subscribe and I'll see you guys soon